the Dragon Table, I'll be going over a tutorial on how to play Suburbia. This is a new game that came out last year. It's a Mensa Select winner. It's a game for one to four players. Uh, it takes about 90 minutes and for ages eight and up. And you and your fellow uh, players will be building a burrow within a city. So some of the tiles that you get to play are going to affect uh, other people's uh, cities or they will be affected by what other people have played in their little burrows. Um, and it, if you like uh, SimCity, the video game, which I happen to love, um, I think that this will have some, of, some appeal. Uh, it's not the same, obviously, but it will have some similar appeal. So let's take a look at Suburbia. This is Suburbia, almost completely set up for a three-player game. And let's go over setup uh, real quick so you know how to start the game. Um, because there are a lot of bits and pieces that go along with this. Um, you start by placing the real estate market triangle here. And you place four each of community park, suburbs, and heavy factory on their respective spaces. Each player also gets one suburbs, one community park, and one heavy factory placed exactly in this confirmation um, in their own borough. And that will determine those, their starting income and their starting reputation, which is always a starting income of zero and a starting reputation of one. And that is because of the layout of these tiles, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, there are also open goals that are available throughout the game uh, and whoever achieves any of these goals at the end of the game will get those bonus points. If any two players tie, then no one gets the points. Players also will have a secret goal. They're handed two goals from the supply. They get to look at them and choose the one that they want and then keep it secretly off to their side. And then if they achieve it at the end of the game, then they get a bonus. And your points are scored on the population track. Everyone starts at two. And as you move along the population track, you'll cross red lines. Anytime you cross a red line, you lose one income and one reputation because it's um, the simulation of as your town is growing, it's harder to maintain it. So the red lines get closer and closer together, especially as you get up towards the top, it's um, every other number that you cross you're going to be losing one income and one reputation because it's that much harder to maintain uh, an income and the reputation of your city as it's growing. Uh, they recommend placing all of the money together in a pile on this triangle, which I can't do um, because it's too much money to fit on the triangle, so it spills off and drives me back crack crazy. So I have to stack my money very nicely. <laughs> And neatly. Uh, everyone starts with 15 million, which is what these stand for. They all look like, um, on any of the tiles, it'll look like it says three dollars or four dollars. It means three or four million dollars. Um, but it's all designated by single digits. You also will start with three investment tokens that you'll be able to place on your, your burrow uh, as the game continues. And I'll explain those a little bit later. This is the first player token. It looks like this. So we have it in front of that person to start with, and then it will proceed clockwise after each round. This is the base of the real estate market. Um, each of these stacks has 18 tiles in it. There's an A stack, a B stack, and a C stack. You start with A when A is depleted, then you move to B, and then you move to C. Now there's another part of setup that I wanted to include in the video because sometimes people are confused by it. Uh, you start with your 18 tiles in your C deck, but there's an additional thing that you have to do in setup. There's a one more round token, which has a C on the back, and uh, depending on the number of players that you're playing with, you have to mix it in with a certain number of tiles. Since this is a three-player game, we have to mix it in with nine more C tiles. So that round marker is going to get mixed in. So we're not going to know exactly how far down in the pack it is. Uh, 
and that's going to go on the bottom of this deck. Then you take an additional four tiles and place those on the very bottom. In case you put the one more round at the very, very bottom of the deck, you still want to be able to have enough tiles out to be able to refill the, the real estate market um, for the last round. So you have a leaning tower of C's. Yeah. And then the remainder will go back in the box. There are also cheat sheets that every player can have. Uh, there's one for each color. Uh, on one side, it goes over what you can do on your turn. Um, it describes some of the icons that you see on your tiles. And it also goes over exactly what happens when placing a tile because many things can happen and sometimes it's easy to forget to refer to all the different things that can happen when you put a tile down. These goals, uh, I have three of them out because it's a three player game. Underneath you can see there's a three player token marker there. This is four players. This is two players. Uh, so you can see how many you need to put out. Uh, makes it handy. So let's build the real estate market and we start that with the A's. So we've got a convenience store, a fast food restaurant, a farm, a mobile home community, a homeowners association, another convenience store, and another farm. And that's the beginning of the real estate market. On your turn, you can buy a tile from the real estate market. You can buy a tile from the supply here, or you can invest in a tile that's already on uh, in your borough. If you buy a tile from the real estate market, you have to pay the price that's on the tile, which in the case of the convenience store is $6 million, um, and then you have to pay the price that's listed above it. So all the ones that, these two down here, you don't have to pay any additional costs, you just pay the cost of the tile. And as you progress up the real estate track, you're gonna be paying more uh, in order to get that tile. Uh, so is that something that's more towards the, maybe the, I would say the middle to mid end range of the game, where you've got some extra money to spend and something comes up that really would help your town a lot, and then it's worth paying the extra 10 million or 8 million to get it. But normally, you're going to be purchasing from probably this side of the real estate market. Alternatively, you can always buy one of these middle tiles. Suburbs cost three, community park costs four, and a heavy factory costs three. There are only four of each of those tiles, so it's something to keep in mind if you have a plan in your head for using those, um, that other people might want to buy them too, and they could run out. Alternatively, you can invest in a tile on your borough, and you do that by paying the cost of the tile again, and then covering that cost with a two times marker. And that means that then, from that point on in the game, uh, you get twice the benefit. So you would immediately get uh, twice the benefit of anything that had already happened, and then anytime you add a tile adjacent to it that would do something, you would get twice the benefit or twice the penalty from it, depending on what it is. That's a, a very effective way of managing your town because one of the things that you want to balance in this game is making sure that your town doesn't grow too quickly because if your population starts getting up too high, you're going to be losing income every time you cross one of these red lines. And um, it sometimes can be hard to then make it back up. If you're that far ahead on the reputation track and you're moving that much on the population track every turn, uh, you're then losing income and it's, it can be very difficult to manage. So something to keep in mind is a balance between income and population. Just like a real town, imagine that. Some of these tiles are only gonna affect your own borough and it will say that. It will say um, on the tile, uh, you get such, such and such of a benefit for uh, every adjacent uh, something. And so it would be anything that's adjacent to that tile. For instance, this heavy factory is minus one population or minus one reputation for each adjacent um, 
uh, government building or residential building. But there are also tiles that say, for instance, the farm, you get plus one for every restaurant. Because what we're building is a single city and we're just working on boroughs within the city, that benefit of a plus one income for every restaurant means every restaurant in the entire city. So that would include the other boroughs. Sometimes it'll say plus one for each of your restaurants or something to that effect. That's not actually one of the tiles, but that's just an example. So before I go over exactly what would happen during a turn, um, let's zoom in and show you what some of these real estate tiles look like. So first off, we have the three base tiles. We've got Community Park, which costs $4 million. It's a government building, um, and it is worth minus one income because it costs money to upkeep. For each adjacent uh, industry, house, or commercial building that's next to it, um, it gets plus one to its reputation. So it's good for increasing your reputation. The heavy factory uh, is three million dollars and it is uh, plus one income and it is a minus one reputation for each adjacent um, government building or house. The suburbs are $3 million and they just give you a plus two to your population immediately. Now down here, starting um, with the cheapest choices, under the zero, first zero marker, we have a convenience store um, for $6 million that will just give you a plus one to your income. This tile will actually do something um, based on what it's adjacent to. It's a fast food restaurant costs seven million dollars and it has a plus one income and it is a plus three to your population for each adjacent um, home tile. The farm is nine million dollars and it's also under the two million dollar spot so it would be a total of eleven million. Um, it would give you minus one to your reputation but it would give you plus one for every restaurant. And that means every restaurant in the entire city. So that would include all boroughs. So any restaurants that have been built in either and any of the players' boroughs would count for your plus one to income. There's also a mobile home community that's under the four million mark, um, and it is cost also costs four million, so it'd be a total of eight million, and that gives you immediately plus six to your population. The homeowners association is a nice one. Um, it's currently sitting at the six million spot and it also costs six million. It gives you immediately plus one to your population, but it also gives you two dollars for every uh, home that exists in the city. The convenience store is underneath the eight million mark right now uh, and it costs six million. It's the same thing as this first one. It gives you plus one to your income. And this farm is the same. It's just underneath the 10 million mark right now. So here's what would happen during a turn. So it's the yellow player's turn because he has the first player marker. Um, he wants to increase his income. He doesn't want to increase his reputation right now because he doesn't want to grow his city his, or his borough too quickly. Um, he also only has 15 million, so he doesn't want to spend a ton. Uh, so he's looking probably at the lower end. And he sees that he can get that convenience store is six and that would give him plus one. Um, but he could also increase his score if he went for the fast food restaurant. So that's what he's going to do. Um, he is going to pay seven million. So he'll turn in his ten and get three and change. And he will take this fast food restaurant. And now um, for each adjacent home tile that he places it next to, he would get plus three uh, to his population track. So he's going to put it right here next to this suburbs. So the first thing you're going to look at is the immediate effects of the restaurant, which is plus one to income. So he gets to move his income marker up one. Now he also looks at this effect on the bottom. It's plus three population for each adjacent home tile. And there's one uh, residential tile next to it. So he'll get plus three on this track. One, two, three. 
Now it gets a little more complicated because he has to look at what's next to it. Uh, the community park uh, gives you plus one reputation for each adjacent um, industrial, residential, or commercial. And we just placed a commercial building next to this tile, which means we're going to get plus one on our reputation track. Now we've dealt with the uh, conditions of this and um, we would also at this point check to see if this tile affected any of the other boroughs. It doesn't because it is for adjacent tiles only. Uh, it does not um, uh, affect other tiles. Although if someone else had say a farm out, it would affect that person's farm uh, because it is a restaurant and farms uh, are increased, uh, you get a plus one income for every restaurant that's out in the city. So this would affect farms. Um, so now he will collect his income, which is one. So he would get one token. And he also is at two on the reputation track. That means he gets to move up two on the population. And now you have to adjust the real estate market. Everything slides to the right. And you add the next tile in the last spot. And now play is ready for the next player. And play continues in that manner. If you purchase a tile from here, from one of the basic tiles, or if you decide to invest in your uh, in your city or in your borough, you still have to take a tile out of the real estate market. And in that case, if you buy one of these tiles or if you invest, then you get to choose which one of these tiles gets discarded. So that is very strategic. So if there's something that you know that someone is wanting to get, or you know that there's something that's really going to benefit someone, um, that's when you can get rid of it. Uh, especially if it's just moved down into maybe a more uh, convenient spot for that person to get, you can take it off the market uh, and and then the real estate track would get adjusted as I just did for the other player. Now on this board, as I mentioned, there are red lines. Every time your piece crosses a red line, you lose one income that is marked on your borough track and you lose one reputation. And that's going to happen every time you cross one of these red lines. So it's important to kind of think ahead and, just, and make sure that if you're going to cross a red line, if it's the right time to do so, um, and maybe if you can make up for it by getting enough income or reputation. Uh, sometimes it's actually uh, helpful because maybe your uh, reputation is getting a little too high and your population is growing too fast, and you can take advantage of crossing a line to take it down one. Obviously, your income can go negative, in which case at the end of your turn, instead of getting income, you would have to pay income. If you cannot pay income, then you have to decrease uh, your marker on the population track. Uh, your population can also, or your reputation can also be negative, in which case you would have to move backwards on the population track. You can never go below zero, and you can never go below negative five on your own borough track. Now I'm going to set up something that would happen maybe a little further into the game with some more tiles and show you the impact of placing a tile into a more complicated city. Okay, so we've got a little bit more of a complicated uh, borough at this point. And um, we've done some, we've added some structures, we've increased the income, we've increased the reputation a little bit, but not by a lot. Um, this person has decided that he is going to build a fancy restaurant and he's going to place it here and actually he's not going to place it there. I lied. He's going to place it right here where it's going to be more complicated. So again, the first thing you do is you look at the immediate effect, which is plus three to income. One, two, three. And then it's minus one for all restaurants built after this. And that is a minus one income for all restaurants built after this anywhere in the city. So, but there's going to be more effects. We have a parking lot next to it, which is a plus one for each adjacent government or 
commercial structure. So that gets plus one. And this office building is also a plus one for each adjacent business, which this is. So we also get a plus one for that. So his income went up by quite a lot just by playing this one tile in the right spot. The other thing that you can do at any time um, is you can pay just the cost that's located above the tile on the real estate market. So you could pay as much as zero million dollars um, uh, or up to 10 million to place a lake. Uh, and if you do that, you place it with the number or the uh, letter side up and you get exactly what it says, $2 for each adjacent uh, structure. So in this case, he would get $6 million. And any time he built onto it, he would then add more money uh, for building a structure next to it. I personally like uh, if you're if you if you are running a little bit low on money and you've got one that's uh, been surrounded by uh, by other building structures, that's often a good one to invest in because it will cost you zero to invest in it and it will double the effect. So whatever you've already gotten paid, you'll get paid again. And again, that's not your income track, that's just straight cash money. So that's one way to manage your finances. So the game would continue. Um, obviously, I just used this, uh, the, our yellow guy as my example burrow. Um, you would continue uh, to deplete the A's, A's until they were gone. Then you would deplete the B's until they're gone. And, they, and they're slightly different buildings in the B stack and then in the A stack and there are slightly different buildings in the C stack as well. Um, any of them at any time can be used as a lake, like I demonstrated in, on the Yellow City. But I wanted to show you what happens when you get to the last round tile. It is way down there, okay. So this is the one more round tile. When you're adjusting the real estate market at the end of your turn and this tile comes up, uh, what you do is you is everyone is now going to get one more round. So after this current, whatever current round is, whatever place it's in, once it's done, then there's one more round beginning with the start player. This doesn't go in the real estate market. Then you go back to these bottom, uh, the tiles that are left over will get placed in the real estate market instead until you run out. And this just gets placed off to the side. And when the last person takes their turn, the game is over. So at the end of the game, the first thing that you'll do is you'll award goals. And you'll refer to the goals that are out in the open first. So assess them one by one and see who has achieved. In this case, um, the most airports. Um, and that person would get plus 10 on the population track. Uh, the person with the fewest uh, government buildings would get plus 15. In this case, the person with the fewest lakes would get plus 20. So those are things that you're going to think, be thinking about during the game. In addition to your regular strategy, is you also might be considering trying to go for these goals. So those are scored, and red lines at this point are ignored. You just score straight, uh, just move your points. Then you assess your individual goals. Um, you flip them over and you say, okay, I was supposed to have the fewest uh, industrial buildings because I was supposed to be the environmentalist. And if that's the case, if you have the fewest industrial buildings, then you would score 15 points. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different types of goals. And again, like I say, these red lines are ignored when you're doing final scoring. Then your money is converted into population points. For every $5 million you have, you get one population point. So if you had 15 million at the end of the game, you would get to score three more population points. Um, and then whoever has the most points wins the game. If at, at some point during the game you pass 150 points, uh, you go to the one and you pretend it's 151 and you have to pretend as if there's a red line after every even number. So it's exactly the same as the top of the board. Um, so you would just have to pretend every time you pass an even number, you've crossed a red line. But that doesn't happen too much in the multiplayer game. 
So the most important thing is to be very aware of how your tile is going to be affected by the tiles that are placed adjacent to it and if it's going to be affected by any of the tiles in the other burrows. Um, that's one of the hardest things probably to keep track of and it'll help if your if you're other friends that you're playing with keep track of that too. Uh, but it is a very fun um, city management uh, game. I like that the boroughs interact and that they're not individual. Uh, the fact that they interact with each other makes it much more interesting and it means that you really have to keep track of what your other people are doing. Not only for that, but also because of the goals that are in place. If you're really trying to go for a goal, you need to make sure that you are on top of it. Uh, so that is Suburbia. I hope you have fun playing. Thanks for visiting the Dragon Table. I'll see you next time.